Station AM 1220 KHTS. It's time for our segment with All Creatures uh, Veterinary Center. Today filling in for Dr. Sandu is Michael Campbell. Good morning, Michael. Good morning, good morning. And you are the Director of Operations? That is correct. Well, good. Very oh, fancy right. title. Very fancy title. <laughs> well, let's talk about uh, All Creatures. You, you not only have the, the location, which is a 24-hour emergency service and also i've taken my pets to to uh, all creatures by the way and great service i i highly recommend but you've got the 24-hour service there and and in new hall which is right there on lions avenue just west of main street but you also have the location in canyon country correct that's correct that's one right off solid at canyon road uh during open during day hours monday through saturday right so if you are in this side of the valley or on this side of the valley you can always take them to canyon country location but after hours uh, even Sunday nights, early Monday mornings, Saturdays, whenever, because dogs don't always, or pets, I should say, don't always get sick during normal business hours. Right. All Unfortunately, pe- the pets sometimes, uh, as soon as people get home, that's when they get hurt. That's true. and uh, Or they start getting worse at a certain time, or overnight is all of a sudden when they, they develop the uh, symptoms that you didn't expect. So right. it's good that there's a place like that. And I've been to your, obviously, to your Newhall facility, and, and we actually had done a couple of live remotes as, as part of KHTS down there, and I've been able to take a tour of the entire facility. And what you have, at least in the Newhall facility, with the kind of the state-of-the-art equipment is really particularly awesome. And I know also, though, that even if there's something you don't have here, you can always transport to your hospital, which is a full-service hospital out in the Antelope Valley, correct? Right. That's the AV Animal ER and Critical Care. Uh, there's a lot of expanded services that are available to both of our sister hospitals, both Scanning Country and All Creatures. And that's where uh, Dr. Sandu had performed the, this kind of a breakthrough stem cell regenerative uh, medicine process on those two. Uh, one was one uh, dog had severe arthritis. The other one had severe inflammatory issues. And they, uh, they, he performed that stem cell procedure, and they are actually doing quite well, correct? That is very correct. Great, <laughs> great memory. Uh, yeah. So we did the first double stem cell procedure in the Antelope Valley area, uh, and both patients are doing extremely well. And just, just so that people know, this is a stem cell. That actually, all they're doing is taking... Um, some stems, stem cells from actually from the fat part of the dog. So there's no, you know, for anybody who may have morality issues with this, this has nothing to do with embryonic stem cells That's or exactly anything right. like that. All they're doing is, is taking it from one part and even injecting it near the affected area. It doesn't even have to be right on it. And the stem cells will actually make their way toward the affected area and begin into the healing process. So any anybody who has a, a Dogs were possibly, are they performing the seeds on cats as well? We sure or? do, both okay. dogs and cats. So any type of ar- uh, arthritis or, in- or severe inflammation, that is something that is, it provides long-term effects and reduces the, uh, the amount of medications and things that you would have to usually provide your pets long-term, such as uh, steroid treatments or anything like that, correct? That's absolutely right. So the primary indication of stem cell therapy is joint issues, like you said, so cartilage issues, bone issues, spinal issues. But we have to remember that there's also a whole branch of this, uh, this new medicine that is called compassionate care. And compassionate care is used for patients that have any kind of kidney issues or liver issues or cardiac issues or lung issues. What the early re- research is showing is that with the stem cell therapy, that it can help a, a whole myriad of these problems in addition to the joint issues. Well, and that's, that's incredible what the advances, because again, what, what ends up happening is as your pets get older and the, the, the amount of medication and the traditional treatments, it seems to really limit what they can do and how they, they function from a quality of life, even though they may be feeling better. But from what I've heard from especially the stem cell treatments is they're like back to their old selves, pretty much. I right. mean, as much as their age will allow them. Right, exactly. So we don't want to give the wrong impression. We don't want you to come in and, you know, have a 15-year-old German Shepherd and expect him to act like a 40-year-old puppy. But the, the, what we've seen so far is pretty amazing. You know, the stem cells, they can actually restructure a lot of the, the bone formations and, and make them kind of like new again. So you can't ex- can expect a significant difference in the way your dog behaves. Now let's also talk about, because All Creatures uh, doesn't just treat dogs and cats. You actually have uh, staff on hand that can treat exotic animals, right? Exactly. And we were lucky enough to partner up with a specialist from the East Coast, and she was uh, Dr. Lindsay Rosen. She was just out here and spent uh, four days with us over the Memorial Day weekend just to give our staff a refresher on uh, exotics, so including your reptiles, uh, fish, we talked a little bit about fish, uh, avians of course. Uh, we actually have a, a almost a petting zoo over at Elk Creatures to make sure that we stay uh, abreast of all the new 
uh, medical knowledge that's out there. I've been there. I've seen like the cats that kind of hang around. You have the right. one black cat, and then you've got the lizard. Uh, not lizard. It's a snake, or is it a lizard? Betty was in there for uh, a while. Betty is a boa constrictor. Okay. okay. Uh, but we also have Marion, that's just a chameleon, and we have two iguanas, and couple of cockatoos and i'll say this too i uh, all creatures especially down there on uh, lions uh, bringing my dogs in usually they can sense a vet clinic you know before they even go in they're tr- they're doing that thing where they're trying to pull away but they always come in like hey you know so it's a really friendly atmosphere the staff has been terrific uh with with both our dogs i had uh, my dog buddy in uh, recently for it's um there's some spinal issues that are kind of degenerative. He's almost an 11 year old dog. So, but you guys have treated him. He's doing really, really good right now, uh, and with the treatment, and has responded very, very, very well. So he's almost like his old self again. But Dr. Sandu, he said he might be a candidate for stem cells. So that's something we're thinking about as well. Yeah, right? absolutely. So, like I said, a lot of the newer research is going towards spinal medicine, and some of the preliminary results are astounding. We've actually done a couple of procedures now where we're um, looking at the effects of this, those stem cells on the spine. So we'll have to keep you folks updated. So that's outstanding. So uh, All Creatures Veterinary Clinic, Canyon Country Veterinary Hospital, is that what it's called? Exactly. Awesome. And also the Antelope Valley, the full service Antelope Valley Hospital as well. So in case they can't uh, take care of it here, they can always be transported out there to be uh, for full service uh, pet care. Specialty care, yeah. Specialty care. Michael Campbell, thank you so much for coming on Operations Director for All Creatures Veterinary Clinic. Your customers are out there looking for you. Don't get lost in a sea of competitors. The Statster has arrived at your hometown station, and he has the answers you need. Along with a few other tricks up his sleeve, he's brought Google Business Photos to Santa Clarita. Imagine Google Street View for the inside of your business. Your potential customers can virtually walk through your business and look around anytime, anywhere, from the comfort of any computer, tablet, or smartphone. Visit thestatster.com before your competition does. Hi, my name is Joshua Maddox, owner of SCV Hometown Web. We're a skilled team of local professionals with a passion for web development. Our specialties include online marketing, custom web development, and creative graphic design services that are second to none. At SCV Hometown Web, our goal is to provide you with a highly effective, creative solution that is built to suit your individual needs. Call us at 661-347-1426 or visit our website to see a list of our clients at scvhometownweb.com. We are back with uh, Michael Campbell, Director of Operations for All Creatures Veterinary Clinic. Good morning. Good morning. So we've been talking about the services that you provide not only here, but at your Candy Country Hospital and also at your um, your Antelope Valley facility. AV Animal Year. Yep. That's right. And I want to talk a little bit, though, because people have asked me questions about like uh, weight with, with pets, especially cats first, because a lot of people who are apartment dwellers, their cats are indoors. They kind of do their best to to feed them correctly. They don't do any table scraps or anything like we like to do with dogs. But um, cats, especially if they're, if they're indoor cats, because especially in this area, we don't uh, necessarily want to, to put them outdoors because we've got so many wild animals and everything. But right. what can be done to maintain the weight of, of especially our cat friends? Sure. So my experience, uh, what I found is that the majority of cat owners feel as though that they need to leave food out for the entire day for their cat to nibble on and it's called a free feed. So one of the best ways to get weight under control is to control the amount of food that your pet is eating. So it's the same principle as people. When you have an overweight kitty, it means that your kitty is consuming more calories than the kitty is burning. And so you need to reverse that. It needs to burn more calories than it's consuming and then it will uh, gradually uh, reduce the weight. So one of the easiest ways to do that, one of the first steps that you should take is to speak with your veterinarian to make sure uh, a weight to develop a, a conscious weight control plan. But what the veterinarian will probably tell you is to divide the food into two servings, one in the morning and then one in the evening. Um, you should never uh, take away food and try to try to put your cat onto a schedule. Uh, cats can develop liver disorders very, very quickly, so you never want to starve your, your, your cat. Um, so by dividing those uh, that food into two meals, a lot of times we'll put them onto a schedule and that way you can control the portions amount 
uh, that your cat consumes. And from my experience, cats do know how to tell time. So they will let you know, especially yes, when they get yes. used to that, they will let you know when it's time to, to, uh, to eat. So what about, is there anything from an exercise standpoint, like in cats who are in limited spaces or like uh, one bedroom apartments or something that can be done to, uh, you know, you don't usually take them out for walks. So what else can be done with that? Sure. Absolutely. So I'm a big advocate of leaving your, your kitties in the house. Unfortunately in, in veterinary medicine, we see the results of people who choose not to do that. Uh, so definitely recommend leaving your kitties in a house. And basically it's about playtime. It's about even during those feeding times, like you said, the cats recognize when it has its, its feeding time and you can turn it into a game. Anything that you can uh, have your cat interact with, uh, it could be the food, it could be feeding a kibble at a time from the food, uh, can become a game with them where they're pawing at your hands trying to, trying to get the kibble. Uh, when you come home from work, just spending time uh, playing and running around the house, having them chase chase balls. Uh, my kitty cat uh, used to love to fetch, so I would throw the ball and and sh he would run and go grab it and bring it back to me. And so cats can be trained to do a lot of things, and they can be just as active as dogs are inside the house. Well, that's good, and that's uh, important to understand. And dogs also, I mean, the same thing. You can walk them and things like that. There's a little bit of a difference there, but they're pretty much the same rule applies to cats and dogs as far as free as as free feeding and just as set schedules. I know that's worked for my pets who are starting to get a little overweight there. I so. would always definitely recommend a set schedule and divided a, a divided feeding schedule. That's one of the first steps that you can take. Outstanding. Michael Campbell, Director of Operations for All Creatures Veterinary Center. Thank you so much for stopping Thank by. You very really much appreciate for it. Me.